Hey, we're continuing our conversation about the gospel and specifically about sharing the gospel. And it's been rich. I just love this time. We've great, great material to think about, to wrestle with. And we want to be a people who share the good news, not just receive it, but deliver it. We're ambassadors of Christ. And really, we shouldn't complicate this. Man, we can complicate so much in life. But the good news, the simple message of the hope of Jesus Christ should be something that we freely share and we need to keep it simple. So Danson is going to bring some insight to us on that particular topic and uh, thinking about how we can just keep it simple and share the good news at every opportunity. Minutes, uh, you know, he heard the gospel and he ended up taking my contact details and said he wants to be in touch with me. The second key is this. It's good to update yourself with some of the worldviews and religious views that are out there. Whenever you are striking a conversation with someone, you need to understand the context of their background, their belief systems, and that provides you uh, a confidence and much clarity as to how you need to share the gospel with them. The third key is the never to get ahead of yourself. That is when you're having a conversation with someone, and that person brings up an argument, uh, make sure that you don't take it personally or you don't continue with the argument. Keep it simple. The whole goal of sharing the gospel is that person to encounter Jesus. Now think about this. Jesus never said, believe me and then follow me. He said, follow me. And in the process of disciples following Jesus, they discovered who, who he was. In the process of that, they experienced transformation. Ask right questions. Let's say you are in a conversation with someone who is not interested to know about God. You might want to start asking some few questions. It may not be spiritual in nature, but they will start opening about their lives to you. They will share about their highs and the lows. And somewhere in some point, you can connect your story with their story. Let's say you are dealing with a young person. You might want to ask him or her, what is their dreams? What is their ambitions? What is their goals? And what is their life going to look like to them after they achieved it? Probably they'll answer the first part, but in somewhere in a conversation at some point, they'll open a door where you can come in and share the message of the gospel. The finally, fifth point is to invite the people that you just met into your environment. Invite them to your home for a meal. Ask them to come and be a part of your church group or ask them to be a part of a Bible study group, introduce some of your Christian friends to them and make them feel right at home. And by doing that, they will open their heart even more to receive the message of the gospel. God has promised us in his word that a harvest is plentiful and that he's not looking for a perfect vessel, but a willing vessel that is ready to go and take that steps of faith to demonstrate God's goodness to people. And with that, I want to encourage you with a scripture verse from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 20. And here's what it says, And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Be rest assured as you take those steps to minister the gospel to new people, that you're not alone, but God's presence is with you. And I pray that as you apply the points that I've just shared, I pray that you'll do this out of love and do it consistently. May God bless you again. Bye-bye. Now, this is so cool because we're going to have a chance to give you some real practical application here. So, so here's the deal. We've been talking about the gospel, defining it, giving examples of sharing it, just, just kind of telling stories that it, it's for us. There, there's a harvest out there. And if we would scatter these seeds, God will produce the results. Now, um, I want to give you a, a way to share the gospel. In fact, I'm not going to give it to you. Chris is going to share it with you. And it's a powerful process but a very simple approach. And so it's something every one of us can do. And so check out Chris, Chris's teaching on sharing the gospel through social media. Hi, my name is Chris Police. I'm part of an organization 
called the 1000 Churches Team, and uh, it's good to be with, uh, with you and all people everywhere uh, where we desire um, that as the gospel of Jesus Christ reaches all people everywhere, uh, the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about the gospel field of Facebook friends list. So uh, I actually have some church planting, disciple making movement friends in Cuba. And, and one of the things this friend of mine says that uh, what he trains his people to do and even their family units as they're becoming disciples and discipling others, Every day they want to do four things. Uh, they want to make sure every single day they worship the Lord. Every single day they hear from God in the Bible. Every single day they hear from God in prayer. And then number four, they want to make sure every single day they're not going to bed without evangelizing, without witnessing, without reaching out to someone else to another family or another person in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thought, boy, I, I would like to, to have that kind of daily rhythm, uh, worshiping, glorifying the Lord every day, hearing from God in the Bible every day, hearing from God in prayer every day, and very importantly, sharing the gospel every single day, witnessing, evangelizing every single day. But I, you know, like all of us, was, was struck with this, how do we share the gospel in lockdown, in quarantine, while while the while, while there's this, this uh, pandemic going around and we're not permitted to, to be with people, how can we share the gospel? And so, uh, and so I just kind of thought, well, why don't I kind of get a system? You know, I've got Facebook. I've got all these Facebook friends. Most of my friends on my friends list, I'm, I'm not actively speaking to or talking to. You know, maybe they're acquaintances from schools I attended in the past or places I used to live. And, and we really don't keep in touch much. So I thought, well, why don't I just start at A and start working my way through my friends list and just asking a handful of people every day, um, how can I pray for you? You know, not, not publicly. Uh, not not posting on the page, but in a private message, one on one, and it, uh, you know, on Messenger is how I did it. But just uh, just privately through Facebook, that that message, hey, these are tough times. The world needs hope. Just going through my friends list, I wanted to ask, how can I pray for you? Is there something I can pray for you for? And so I, I started systematically every day asking a handful of people how I can pray for them. Almost all. Almost all of them have responded uh, asking for prayer. Uh, some of them very deep, vulnerable uh, prayer things. Uh, others are more surface level. Uh, but, but again, nearly everybody is, is glad to have somebody praying. Uh, and, and what was thrilling to me is in some cases, the conversation went deeper and the conversation continued. So I just want to share for a moment about uh, my friend Andy Ablog. You can hear the A's right right at the top. One of the first people I reached out to, Andy Ablog. I haven't seen him since the fourth grade. We grew up together in Pittsburgh, uh, just in the neighborhood, and went to the same elementary school. And I haven't seen him in decades, literally. And um, I asked how, how I can pray for him. And he really opened up about something deep. And, um, and so I started praying and, uh, and praying for him. And the conversation continued. And so... I invited him. I said, you know what? You sound like you could use some hope. Would you be interested in doing a Bible study online? You know, it's a, it's a good way uh, to, to get some hope in a time like this. And he said, yes. He said, well, I guess I'd be open to trying something like that. You know, I could tell he was a little uncomfortable, but he said, yeah, why not? And so we met for Zoom a few weeks ago, and, and we had a discovery Bible study, which is a form of Bible study that's really good for people who aren't believers yet, uh, for, for people who aren't, aren't from a church background. And, um, and, and, and the first study we did was a passage uh, from the Gospel of Luke about a woman who falls at Jesus' feet weeping, and, and she... And she, she uh, washes his feet with her tears and her hair. And at the end of the story, uh, Jesus says, daughter, your sins have been forgiven you. He says, go in peace. And so my friend Andy Ablog at the top of my friends list on Facebook uh, was talking about peace and was so struck by how he needed peace and he was craving peace in his life. And so after that story, I shared the good news about Jesus Christ. I said, 
Annie, Jesus, just like he brought peace to this woman, he can bring peace for you. And I asked him, would you, would you like to receive Jesus? Do you want to get right with God? And Andy said, yeah, I would. Let's do it. And so we just prayed. Uh, we prayed together over, over um, Zoom, just like that. And uh, I led him through the sinner's prayer. And, and Andy received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And we've been meeting uh, every other week after that, uh, continuing to, to disciple him, uh, to show him how to, how to be an obedient follower of Jesus Christ, how to be a disciple. And uh, it's really neat just to walk uh, kind of over Zoom even with this Facebook friend. Uh, and now he's, he's learning how to obey everything the Lord Jesus commanded. And uh, we live over by the Chesapeake Bay. He's going to drive over uh, when he can and get baptized. So we're really looking forward to that. And, uh, and at the same time, the gospel is kind of permeating through his family and his networks now. Um, so all that said, um, our God is a creative God, and there are many creative ways uh, that, that he seeks uh, to share the gospel, and a great gospel field is your Facebook friends list. So I want to just encourage you, come up with a system, reach out in the name of Jesus, with the gospel of Jesus, in one way or another, begin to reach out, you know, individually, privately, uh, to your friends, so that trust could be there, right? It's not for the world to see. Just engage in that one-on-one -on -one way and begin to reach out maybe to your friends list and share the good news of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you as you share the gospel to all people everywhere. Hey, that wraps up this episode. I hope you were encouraged as we talked about sharing the gospel and literally keeping it simple. Come on, let's keep it simple. If you've enjoyed this, hit subscribe, hit like, share it with someone. We hope uh, that this encourages you on your journey of following Jesus on his mission in the harvest field. We're just believing that God's desire is for all people everywhere to hear the good news. And we wanna make disciples who make disciples who join Jesus on his mission in this world. God bless.